phones are live. And we're live. Hell yeah. So Ooh. the people, hi. I finally have my microphone and my headset working. Hi, people. <laughs> hey, everyone. All ones of you. <laughs> In my I case, think that might be me. Six, maybe. No, I, I think know. there's one extra person. <laughs> oh, you've got, like, quite a few. We got people. There's people. Hi, people. You're, you're like, almost tied with Jim. <laughs> I got, like, three. You know what it is? We had pictures of Mike. Six, we had pictures seven. of Mike on our clipboards all weekend, and so Mike is now going to be more popular than I am. That's awesome. Take a little yeah. bit of the pressure off of me, thanks. Especially some of those pictures you picked. Thank you. Oh my God, they were great, dude! You have no idea how much fun that was to look through. Um, dude, I tell you what, pictures the one on Friday, like all like. <laughs> that was the creepiest one. And, uh, that was so great. So that was nationals or who, internationals. Who no, no, that was Arizona. The one where you were like this? You that was you with often. Josh. That was a picture of you with Josh. I'm almost positive it was Nationals. Because oh. I remember taking the picture when I showed up to Columbus. Oh, okay. Was it Columbus? No, it couldn't have been Columbus. It had to be Indy. Yes, Pokemon That'd over be... politics. You guys better be watching us instead of the State of the Union. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Poke Stew can, with Mike and Jen. You can always... We got Dan Stir with us tonight. You don't need to be watching the big giant yellow orange Cheeto thing. We have much you. more important to talk about, more important things to talk about tonight. Anyway, uh, I think he's just gonna be ranting and raving, and you can get that from me anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Mike. Thanks for the face. That's a good, that's another screenshot. There it is. Got it. <laughs> got him. <laughs> oh, you serious? How fast are you? Jeez. I call. I have a print screen button. And now I can just copy paste it into something. Yeah, you suck. You're welcome. <laughs> you love me. Anyway, Mike, why don't you take it away with our uh, disclaimer, and then we'll uh, we'll start our. Do we even know which episode this is? Uh, fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. I, I, <laughs> I lost count. I'm All right. Delirious. Disclaimer time. Welcome to the <clears throat> Pokey Stew with Mike, Jen, and tonight, Mr. Danster. Ooh. Everything we're going to talk about tonight is solely the opinions of Mike, Jen, and Dan, and anybody that's in chat. We are well, actually, really actually, because we're going to be doing all the data for my polls, it's the opinions of the, the lovely people who've answered my polls on Twitter, but continue. Uh, true, but nobody, <laughs> and I say again, nobody involved with this production, production, <laughs> Works for the Pokemon Company International, Game Freak, Nintendo, Pokemon, or any of those other affiliates. So everything is our opinion, our opinion only. And that should just about cover everything. I think so. All right. So first topic. Dallas. Dallas. So. The big D, Dallas. Dallas was the first regional of the year, and it was, I believe, also the officially largest regional ever. Uh, so congratulations to Christine Noah, who is the TO for Dallas, for putting on a really great show. Um, she had the entire, like, bottom floor of uh, the uh, Hyatt Regency Hotel in Dallas-Fort Wayne Airport. And it was a lot, there was a lot going on. So there was the main event, there were side events, there was, like, a game convention going on in one room. Um... Then on Sunday, there was like a live event on a big stage with uh, Ross from England as like the MC, and they were doing all kinds of games and stuff like that. And they, she also had, um, what's the, the guy that was signing cards, Dan? Uh, I'm really bad at pronouncing names, but he's... Uh, Is it Mitsu, Mitsu, I don't, Hina, he's Mitsu the Japanese Anyway, she had a really famous uh, Pokemon company card designer there he's done like neither of us can pronounce um so <laughs> like basically dallas was like a crazy regional was a lot going on but it ran really well for the most part and uh congratulations to everyone involved yes that's the name Ari mr arita that's the one um because i can't pronounce names at all um and dan's just disappeared dan where'd you go there he is <laughs> did you get you have your that. card that he signed I do have my card. I was just grabbing it. Oh. <clears throat> He's doubling up on the ear protection. Belt <laughs> and suspenders are approached. 
<laughs> have all the hair protection. Oh my and my god. Car's not in this box, which would make me sad. Might be in the other box. So, what, so right, anyway, is, while Dan is, is looking is, for his card, uh, like I said, so, Dallas went really well. And um, what are your numbers? We had 313 masters on the video game side, 25 seniors, and 11 juniors. Um, video game went really well. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. There's the card. Look at how awesome that is. Cool. <clears throat> so you said 300-something masters? Yeah, 313 masters. We had a top cut of 16, uh, most With of day. which was streamed. What? I was going to say, it didn't that put you over the magic number if we happen to have the same format as TCG for Day 2 Swiss? Yes, it did, actually. It's funny that you <laughs> would bring that up. Funny that you would bring that up. The, the magic number for TCG to get a Day 2 Swiss is 227. We hit way more than that um, and could have had a Day 2 Swiss. Um, we did not. I kind of, I'm kind of thankful for that because I was able to go out and do some... Uh, do some karaoke <laughs> on Sunday night. Hence why I sound awful because I totally shot my voice this weekend. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, we had uh, nine rounds of Swiss, top 16. Uh, we had uh, Critical Hit there doing the stream, and they did a good job. I see TJ's in chat there. He was your stream producer on the VGC side. Um like I said, I think th things went pretty well from a tournament standpoint. Um, but as we move into our main course... Uh... Well, before you go to the main course, I want to talk one more thing about Dallas. I think um, I saw a couple things uh, Facebook, and I, I don't know if I saw it on Twitter. And I think, oh, I think you mentioned it too, Jen, is, uh, like for your top cut, you guys were like in a completely separate room and nobody could watch kind of thing. Yeah. What was that all about? So, all right, so we... Uh, the, the the hotel came to us on Saturday and was like, oh, so your your stage, our hive, was supposed to be up on risers. It was up, supposed to be up on like a like a platform. Um, not that it, I, I mean, it really that the ceiling was kind of low for that. So I really didn't think that it was it would have benefited us anyway. I would have kind of been kind of stupid to have it you know, our heads brushing the ceiling. I think, um, but it was fine. So we were just kind of like, well, we don't even know what this room is supposed to look like tomorrow because I thought that this was supposed to be. Uh, the stream area, like a viewing area, and that we were going to be somewhere else to play. And so he brings over the the floor plan for Sunday, and it has all of the top cut behind an air wall in the room that we were in. So there was like a room that we were in, and there was like pillars on either side that can be broken down. So we were behind an air wall on Sunday. I mean, we definitely weren't thrilled. Um... We asked that morning for it to be taken down. The organizer and um, the person who was kind of like the floor lead, Simba, wanted to take it down, but TCG put the kibosh on that because TCG wanted the players to be isolated in a quiet area. Uh, there was a lot of complaints from the juniors and senior, seniors' parents specifically. Um, but like I said, the organizer and the, 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 uh, the floor lead, Simba, Christina and Simba both wanted that wall taken down. Um, they actually didn't realize that it was going to be a heavy, like, air wall. They thought it was going to be, like, a half wall kind of situation, kind of like a curtain wall, but, like, a half one so that people could see but be on the other side of. Um, and so, you know, it is what it is. We were only back there for top 16, and, uh, like I said, two of those were on the stream, so everyone kind of was able to watch at least that part of it. And then every every match after that, every match in top eight, top four, and obviously finals were streamed uh, by Critical Hit. So we had uh, we had that in the hall so people could watch and also online. So we, it really didn't affect us, and so we didn't really fight it. But it kind of made the event feel like the, you know, the main event is now lo no longer the main event. And I know that that wasn't the organizer's intent at all. Because Christine would yeah. never want the players oh, yeah. to feel like they were, you know, they were not the focus. But that was the uh, that was the decision that was made uh, by the TCG. I guess the the leadership over there. Um, like I said, it it is what it is. They, you know, I don't know if their players asked for it because they also, had, you know, they had like like you said, Mike. They had their day two Swiss, so they had six rounds of Swiss and then their cut of eight. So I'm not sure 
how that decision was made. But with with a three hundred or whatever it was, um, would that give you another five rounds of Swiss on day two? Mm -hmm. Assuming you had the yep. same thing. Yep. And then so you would cut to eight. Two twenty seven. I think it's two twenty seven to somewhere in like the fives or something like that. I don't remember exactly what the bracket is, but two twenty seven gets you day two Swiss five rounds. And then the the number I think that goes to six rounds is somewhere in the fives. I don't think it's as high as seven or eight. I would have to look. Yeah. Um, okay. <clears throat> I know it's just it's one of those things where, and I know we're going to talk a little bit a little bit later in the state of the circuit. Hey. Um. um there's you actually know, I, a complaint I think in my chat that parallels that I when I made the agenda slide honestly so. Um, <laughs> But um, yeah, that's something we can talk about definitely. But um, well, uh, there's a there's a complaint in my chat that I want to address, and okay. um, John did not. Oh, is it already 800? I didn't realize it was that high. Thanks, Los Jackal. Um, John, who was our head judge, officially head judge, but had taken on the role of lead, so he was not the TO. Uh, John Turner um, has had some complaints against him from I think maybe one or two players on how he handled some rulings and stuff, and I just want to kind of address that at this point. Um, what you guys fail to understand is we had a lot going on with the double game freezes, which we'll talk about later, and we were under a lot of stress and pressure from a lot of different areas. There was a lot of things happening that you guys were unaware of, and we were just trying to make things work as we needed to, and... Um, so we were all very stressed out, and John never never intended to um, be short with players or anything like that, um, but a lot of people were pushing back on um, things that were happening, penalties they were receiving, and they were not being respectful to John at all. And I think um, he may have gotten a little, like, short, like I said, he may have gotten a little short with people just because he had a lot of things on his plate that he needed to handle, and... <clears throat> Players were really just like not accepting their penalties, and so you know when 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 this happens, like you know as as a head judge or as a lead, you're kind of like okay, I've given you know we've we've discussed this already. You're just rehashing this again, um, you know. It, it, you're kind of like taking up my time now, and uh, we need to continue running the tournament, you know, because if we hold up the tournament for one ruling, you know now we're delaying 300 other players and their and their matches and that's unfair to them and so whenever we have to do a ruling we yes we have to be fair but we also have to be fast on it um <clears throat> so i know that was never john's intent john is a a lovely gentleman he is such a sweetheart he absolutely gives blood sweat and tears for this community and he, he loves the community so much um but like i said we were we were under a lot of a lot of stress and pressure this weekend um, so I just wanted to address what, what, what was said in my chat so that everybody understands what, yeah. um, yeah. what that comment was about. Um, did you have any actual disqualifications? No, we, we didn't. We, so there was, there was one issue around the beginning of round one before the tournament started. So before we called time, you sat down in your seat, but the tournament still hasn't started. Um, and we had a situation where uh, a player realized that, they forgot to save their their game um, after they had put their items on. Yeah. And so <clears throat> this... It, they you locked know, in a team without items. Exactly. And I guess the player was new or newish and didn't realize. And when he sat down and opened up his DS, he realized that, uh, you know, oh, crap, I don't have my, my items. And then by the time we got over there, the round had started, but he had raised the issue before the round had started. And so we did That's issue good. a penalty, but we were able to <clears throat> lessen the penalty that he received, A, because he let us know of, of the issue, and B, it happened before the tournament started. Um, if, he, if he had realized it during check-in, say we, you know, we're still checking everybody in, he realized it, we would have just unlocked the box, changed it, and went on a merry way. Because he realized it once we, he had sat down for the round, we kind of couldn't do that because it sets yeah. a bad precedent. So what we did was we let him play. We gave him a game loss in the next round, um, and we changed his team sheet to match his team uh, because we felt like, all right, this is round one. We don't want to disqualify this person. Round one, like, clearly he's just paid a lot of money to come here and play. This was not a malicious intent at all. We, obviously, 
nobody wants to play without items, you know? Like, you, you, you want your items on your team. That's why you put them there. You know, I felt awful, but the fact of the matter is, every time we feel awful about something, we, you know, it doesn't mean that we have to kind of take it easy on that person, you know? Like, we still right. had to enforce rules. We still had to issue a penalty there. Um, but I, I, I felt okay with the, the fact that we were able to allow him to continue to play because according to the rules document, if your team doesn't match your team sheet, you lose the Pokemon. This would have been losing all of his Pokemon, and that just wasn't, that didn't sit right with any of us. We went to TPCI before we made any decisions, and we said, listen, he came to us before the tournament started. By the time it was brought on, um, it was, uh, you know, it, the, 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 by the time it got kicked up to me, the, the, I had already started the round. Um, and yes, Draco, I was head judge. That's me. I was, that was me. I'm Jen. Um, according to the TO, the person that was running the regional, John was head judge. But because she had a lot on her plate leading up to the tournament, <coughs> there's a lot of personal things that happened. She lost someone in her family very close to her. Things like that. John did the right thing. He did He did the good thing by him, or by her, actually. Stepped in and said, I'm going to take all of VG off your plate. You don't have to worry about it. This is going to be my deal. And then he called Mike and I and said, hey, how do I do this lead thing? What's the situation? And then he said to me, like, hey, do you want to be my head judge? And I was like, hey, that's fine. Like, however I can, I can support, you know. Um, so like I said, John had a lot of things on his plate this weekend. Uh, I think way more than he expected, and I thought yeah. he 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 did a bang up job. So you know, proud of John, and and congratulations to John for a well run event. Um, I've been talking way too much, so I'm gonna kick it back to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, I uh, see that face, Mike. Uh, Shut up! I hate you. <laughs> wait, did, did, did she did she stop talking? I don't know. I'm still waiting. I'm saying okay. really bad words to you nope. in my head right now, Mike. Yeah, you're always saying bad words. <laughs> Jerk. Um, yeah, so Dallas is cool. <laughs> That's right. my review. Excellent. <laughs> uh, so let's let's talk. Let's move directly into this main course and this this move ban. Um, so as we know, we talked about last week the. Pokemon Company International issued an update to the rules, banning four moves, which um, are known to cause issues with a double game freeze. But it turns out that there are others that um, well, we're still giving you problems, other, other issues, right? So throughout the tournament, what... What what per, how many how many about how many double game freezes did we I know that a couple happened on stream but how many how many double game freezes did you have per round? I'm gonna let Dan answer Jen. this one. So I don't know if Jen got a an actual average or so, but just kind of <laughs> rough average that I took, I probably got like five or six around easily just in my section. Um, one judge and, and we had sixteen judges. Yeah, so, and and I was only really over with the juniors and seniors for the most part. Um, but yeah, every time I turned around with a judge covering an area, they were pretty much sitting on a, on a match that was having to get resolved for a freeze. So it was probably the most I've ever had to move at a regional. Um, <laughs> in fact, just, <laughs> You're and that lazy. sounds really bad. That's, no, no, I don't mean it like that, but just... It just seemed like every every time I <laughs> had resolved an issue, there was another one popping up a couple minutes later. Um, so, no, I don't mean to sound lazy. It was <laughs> just high excitement levels the entire time. Oh, my God. We were everywhere. It, so, I'm going to talk a little bit, if, if that's all right. This was exactly no. like London two years ago. I'm going to say it. This was exactly London two years ago. We ran around like crazy people trying to fix these freezes. At least then we didn't know what it was. Now we knew what it was and we knew what to expect and we had the tools to handle it. But this was London two years ago. This is exactly the same thing. I've been saying it. It's exactly the same thing we were dealing with. So do you think the, <clears throat> the ban actually helped at all? No. No, no zero, I don't believe zero so. Help. No. 
Dan, what in your experience, because you did, like you said, you did about five around, what in your experience seemed to be the most prevalent cause? Um, honestly, I probably saw the most of mine immediately following a turn that would be filled with spread moves, and most notably, Earthquake. Um, earthquake from Landorus, I think, was the biggest thing that I could kind of narrow it down to. Um, Interesting. Now, whether it's actually that or something else that happens in the turn, who knows, but yeah, that's why we tried to take some data and we took a lot. see if we could. Yeah, so we all filled out free sheets throughout the round, um, taking down as much information as possible. Um, Jim actually brought us a really nice sheet from what he's been using. Yeah, Jim um, is in chat. Writing. Kudos to Jim, man. That sheet was awesome. Yes, definitely. Um, but whether, you know, new DS versus old DS, um, there's a nice section to write kind of... Um, observations down so I would try to write down as much about the turn as I could in that box um, there's more information on that sheet but uh, like uh, players I mean it basically name, was play, players name and ID yeah players name and ID um, whether they had a new or old and then it was like 2DS or 3DS and then it was comments <clears throat> I don't think there was anything else other than comments right yeah. it. so that really it just seems right. like the, the, the move ban hasn't helped whatsoever yeah jim i mean i i doubt that we'll need it but if jim if you can get that sheet online as soon as possible so that we can share that to all the judges to use this weekend um mm -hmm. i think you know collecting data continuously uh will help but the tpci rep who was at dallas did promise us that there was a patch incoming and us taking this data was helping them to narrow down what they needed to focus on um so that they can make sure that they got they got everything. Um, there were a couple of crazy things that happened. I know Justin Karras um, experienced a, a b weird bug that I think Gio had said he was going to try and um, and recreate so that we can record it. But basically, Justin Karras, uh, turn one, his opponent does ally switch. Turn two, he goes to Encore the Crest, who used ally switch, into ally switch, and it failed. Um which is not supposed to happen, and so he thought that was really weird. Um, so we brought, I mean, we brought it up, and w hopefully we can get that, uh, hopefully we can get that kind of recreated so we can record it and send it over, but it was really weird. I think there was a couple of other odd bugs floating around here and there. Um, one, there, there were two theories on what possibly caused the issues that we're experiencing. Um... One was that, you know, we had the, the wide guard bug and possibly the fix for that had caused the spread move issue that we're seeing. Um, and then somebody also said that there was a lot of freezes for a stomping tantrum. And I think uh, the, the, the mechanism on stomping tantrum is that if something fails, stomping tantrum doubles in power. And so that was causing um, issues as well. I'm not 100% positive on that because we didn't have Stomping Tantrum in London two years ago, um, and I don't believe we had a wide guard bug then either. Um, but like I said, there were a lot of extenuating circumstances that didn't help us. Um, oh, you sent the video, Geo? Perfect, thank you. Um, <clears throat> the, you know, the tables were uneven because they were kind of like those half table things. And the cloths mm. over them kind of pulled in yeah, place. Those are terrible. <laughs> uh, so a lot of the judges were like giving out their clipboards to players to play on top of. So if any organizers are in the channel or anybody who's a head judge for an upcoming regional can talk to your organizer as soon as possible to make sure they don't use those crappy half tables that are like uneven. They're fine for TCG and by all means go and give them to TCG and give us the full tables please. Um... <laughs> so that we're not having that issue. Um, another thing that was pointed out to us was that the the new 2DS XL, I think, Dan, you may have been the one to point this out, the new 2DS XL, the IR port is a little bit higher on it than on the other 2DSs or the, three, you know, the, the old 3DSs and stuff like that, and so that could also be part of the issue. Did we have new 2DSs last two years ago in London? I don't believe that no. we did, but I think no. it didn't help with the connections. Um, because not only were we seeing double game freezes, we were seeing like lagging between turns, you know, that the machine would like freeze 
And then, it, you know, after five or six seconds, it would bring up the move selection. Um, there were just a lot of, there were, oh, there were so many, there were so many things that, that we were seeing, you know, and I felt terrible for players, you know, because now we have the, the tie chart. Yeah, I, I remember watching uh, part of the critical hit uh, stream, and there was a uh, one of the matches went to time. No, no, I'm sorry. It had a double game freeze, and it was ruled a tie because it was like one to one, and people are like, "How can that be a tie?" Because somebody was clearly ahead, and you know. So there's a lot of discussion, and I, we've talked a little bit about this with some of the players. Um, you know, it's. It, the table can't cover every possible situation um, and the rules document doesn't have doesn't give the judges the latitude to evaluate game state and those kinds of things um, so you know if it's one one and the other person has like one hp left and you're about to you know rock slide to victory and you got full hp and it's a double game freeze tie you yeah. know which which is unfortunate if if it's in one of those critical positions but not much we can do and now what players can do um and i know this asking a lot is if you're that dude with one hp and you're about to get stomped you know you can concede that game mm -hmm. um yeah did you that... happen to see marcus i think marcus uh statter talked no. about this yesterday oh, or the day before yeah you know on it, it john evans brought it to me uh yesterday while i was like tweeting about stuff i was doing a lot of uh polls last night which we'll talk about but um marcus satter had mentioned that um <clears throat> you know if you get to a certain point it you know it's kind of good sportsmanship to concede if you know that you couldn't win there um oh, absolutely and i think and i i think I certain people that. did do it but you know what it's well within your right to follow the rules and if the chart absolutely. says you get a tie and that gives you a win like you know I wouldn't knock players that that do that either. You know what I'm saying? Like, it may not feel great, right. but, you know, this is well within their right. It's not like they're they're being jerks or anything like that. You know, if, if they know. if they want to concede because they know I there was no way I was winning that, absolutely, that's all, you know, that that's well within their rights to do so. And, you know, yeah. I applaud them for, for, you know... For the sportsmanship. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, but but you're right. It, it's um, nothing is required for them to do that, um, and they're perfectly within their own rights to 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 take the tie and move on, right? And so, yeah. like I said, I'm I'm not I'm not pushing for that. I'm not saying players have to do that. I'm just saying that that's another option. That you know, if you're out there and and, and you are uh, in that situation, you feel that strongly about the the, the tie charts when it comes to double game freezes. Um, that's that's the one recourse that we have right now is it's in some, <clears throat> completely in the players' hands. I know um, one of the matches that I, because when we started giving you know judges breaks for lunch and things like that, I was out on the floor more than than I was when everyone was there. Mostly because I was trying to stay up at the top table so that if anybody needed me, I was readily available. Uh, but I did circulate a lot while everyone was taking breaks and. One of the matches that I uh, I was able to you know assist was a seniors match, um, and I don't remember the one the one player's name, but it was James Evans on one side and one of the other seniors who made cut on the other, and they froze while James was up four two, and they had assumed and I think I kind of assumed as well that four two would be a win for James, but I said you know what I'm not I don't have the chart memorized 100%. There's no way I'm going to memorize any of those charts. That's why we have them there to refer to. Let me go and get the chart. So we went and got the chart, and sure enough, 4-2 is a tie. And mm -hmm. uh, the, the, James's opponent was, you know, relieved that it was a tie and not a loss. Um, and I get why that would be a tie, because you, you never know. Like, you could be down 4-2, but those two that you brought out are completely set up, and your opponent's four are, like, not... Chancy. Right, so it's uh, like... You, <laughs> Like, I know that we're not supposed to judge the situation based on the HP remaining and stuff like that, but I think 4-2 and something like 4-1 or 3-1 are completely different situations that you're in. Um, so I think that's why TPCI has a set as a tie, but, yeah, you know, that is what it is. Um, it and and is TJ did perfect. just remind me, so what we did um, while we were collecting the data, which was great, we had all of this um, confirmation physically there 
and with names of players who were having issues that by round five I felt comfortable enough to say these 20 people are moving to Festival Plaza for the rest of the tournament. Oh, I went good. to them, I talked to them, and I said, every round you sit down, you have to inform your opponent that you're going to Festival Plaza. You have to raise your hand, the judge will come over and supervise that you get into Festival Plaza and that you move your teams over, and then you're going to play your round, no problem. Um, thank TPCI for that. We went to them um, and kind of lobbied for it, and the TPCI rep was on board with it completely because it, it was something that we did, like I said, in London two years ago, so there was a yeah. precedent for it. And it was also what they you know, advised us to do during PCs and mid-season was to move over right. to Festival Plaza. Um, and then we had gotten permission... I lobbied to do all of top 16 in Festival Plaza as well. Oh, absolutely. So, Good. Excellent. We didn't have any freezes in top 16. I no, don't think. and I Did know we? that the players know. The players are really yeah. thankful for that. And I said to them, you know, it's unfortunate that we had to play at least, par you know, part of the rounds with everybody dealing with these freezes and people, you know, missing cut because of it. But we now that you're in cut, we don't want there to be any kind of detriment to you we want you to play and win or lose based on your play alone we don't want the game to cause right. your loss no absolutely so, so you, you had mentioned uh the TPC, tpci rep was talking about the incoming patch did he happen to give any kind of time frame the the, the thought is that it's going to go out before sydney they're hoping that it goes out before sydney but like i said there's so many variables there's so many things they have to check um, and if anybody knows anything about quality control or, you know, code testing, it's not like you slap a, slap a fix on it and it's going to be better. I know TJ does a lot of QA for his job and he's well aware of how painful it is. But basically with, with coding, you could fix something, but don't realize that what you're fixing is also, um, messing breaking something, something up. Right. It's yeah. breaking something else. Right? It happens all the time. It, it, exactly. It's awful. And, well, yeah, and, Ga and I mean, Gabby's right. Gabby's problem. saying that they're, they're supposed to test in production. Yes, they are supposed to test in production, but the live competition software isn't really that favored, I want to say. At least in my opinion, I don't think it's their favorite thing to do. Well, and I think they kind of just slapped it on. I work in the software development industry, and even if you <laughs> test things in production, you cannot, uh, well, you can, but it's it's really not cost effective to test every possible combination of move, mon, item, music selection, hardware, configuration, um, those kinds of things. So they can, they can do a testing, um, but, but you're really not guaranteed to capture all of that possible combinations that could give you issues so um they can get as close as they can um th the one thing I, I think you and i jen were talking about is i was kind of disappointed that ultra sun ultra moon is essentially a, re a extension a, a copy paste copy pasta right that <laughs> when we had sun and moon in london two years ago there were all these issues and they eventually got the live competition ir modes pretty much ironed out i would have thought a lot of those code changes for the live comp would have moved forward along with you know the rest of the most of alola region but um but clearly it didn't so um okay i mean i can say a lot of things here and i know i did say a lot of things to the judges especially but i'm just not happy with at all like this game was... freak this could have been avoided had they looked at what they did with the software last year before they implemented Ultra Sun Ultra Moon and said, hey, what patches did we have to do to Sun and Moon? We should apply them to Ultra Sun Ultra Moon. Duh. Like, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, this is what it is. So, the good thing is, if they do get a patch out for Sydney and it does address m at least most of the issues, we should be in pretty good shape for Collinsville as well. So, I mean, we hope we hope so, but you're head judge on Collinsville, right? No? Yes. yes maybe? No? <laughs> well, we'll make sure that you have copies of that freeze job. <laughs> By head judge, you mean we printed out a bunch of papers of your head, and that's what you're going to judge the entire, uh, wow. the entire that's event? Brutal. That's what she meant, right? That's that is exactly brutal. what we meant. 
Oh, I'm gonna pull uh, hopefully, up the hopefully too. you can print off a bunch of those sheets and I'll use them to keep myself warm at night in Collinsville. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lit. That's hilarious. Light them up. Fire. Light them I'm telling you, fire. if Collinsville is good, or if, if Sydney's good, I'm gonna take a bunch of those papers, I'm gonna light them on fire, and I'm gonna send you a picture. Right, right. Here, in the here. I'm gonna put this here so everybody can see. Well, you have to put it at the camera. Uh, it's on the camera so that everybody can see. There it is. Well, it's not. Yeah, it's on my camera. It's on. It's on oh, my camera. Well, not on my camera that you're sharing with Skype. So like. All of those <laughs> pictures on our clipboards are Mike's head. Oh, I'll share it with yours too. God. Oh dear God. There it is. In case you don't follow us on Twitter or whatever, all those heads are Mike's head. It was great. Ha <laughs> Um. You guys. Are at least I didn't have a giant pseudo life size cutout <laughs> stocky coat closet. What? God. That gen um, was a. Uh... I'm not in the closet though. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Sure. Well, no, she's definitely not. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Loud right. and proud. Loud and she's proud. She's over in that closet. No, Gio, we haven't talked about Sydney yet. <laughs> Dan, go get her! Go get her! Do it! Oh, okay, hold on. Is she? Oh my god. Yes, he's got her! He's got her! <laughs> Alright, so while Dan is, Dan is collecting Jen from the closet, <laughs> um, why don't you go ahead and start, since we're about 15 minutes to the hour here, uh, why don't you go ahead and start on the, the, the state of the circuit topic, because I know you've been doing a lot of work here in the last 24 hours. Collecting yeah, some so um, basically the... This past weekend, it gave me a lot of thoughts on how um, we can improve the circuit, how, you know, how should regionals run, that kind of stuff. You know, is there any improvements that we can make? Oh, there she is. Hi, my girl. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. And how does your girlfriend feel about that? Um, she helped me bring it home. You See? know, it, was, it took a lot of work to fit in my suitcase, but we managed <laughs> Can we bring her to NAIC, please? <laughs> Depends pay, on how I get there. I'll pay to fly her out. <laughs> <laughs> you pay to fly her out. I'll get her her own plane seat. <laughs> oh, can you imagine she'll, if you put her on the she'll plane? Send in her, she'll send in her <laughs> own application. Oh, my God, yes. NAIC. Yes, that would be great. Like, what, um, didn't Susie do that for, uh... For Charlie? Uh, Charlie? Yeah, for Charlie. Didn't she do that for Charlie? Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> Anyway, so this, this past weekend gave me a lot of thoughts about uh, circuit, how we could improve it, you know, what we could do, and kind of get, you, even um, getting to know what the players want and who the players are. Uh, and so the first thing that I asked um, yesterday was in the airport, and it was basically, how do you feel about lunch breaks? Um, because we had uh, two extended rounds in Dallas. It was basically round three and round four had an extra 20-minute buffer at the end of them. And so we said, all right, round three is about to start. Be back at 2.55 or whatever. Um, you still had your 15-minute rounds. The timer was still called at 50 minutes. You still had your plus three turns, that kind of stuff. Um, but we had the, that extra kind of buffer for breaks. And so... 177 people voted on it, which really isn't that large of a, a, a swath of the population. Um, I thought that having it's no... Than some regionals. <laughs> oh. I sorry. thought that we would... No, you're right. I thought that we would have um, more people saying no lunch break was preferred, but only 14% of those people said no lunch break was preferred. And I was surprised to see a tie on dedicated lunch break versus extended rounds, um, because I figured... Nobody likes those dedicated lunch breaks because they basically break your concentration. They break your stride. Um, it's like kind of like a too long of a break. Kind of, it's kind of like when you have a pitcher um, who's out there on the mound, you know, when he's pitching, and then he goes back in. You know, it's it's not you know, he's retired the side. He goes back into the dugout, and then his team takes like 15, 20, 30 minutes, half hour. They're hitting. They're getting all kinds of hits. They're getting all kinds of runs, and they're out there. You know, he's in there like. You know, I think it's called icing. No, I, that's like icing, icing, the kicker. It's icing the kicker. Um, it's basically like now his Safety. arm is no longer warmed up and he's kind of like, now he's got to go back out there and pitch the next, you know, the next uh, inning. And, you know, 
it, it's 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 really hard for a pitcher to go back in it in that instance and a lot of times they'll they'll end up throwing some warm up pitches and stuff like that but um depending on where it is in the in the the game if it's a later inning the manager may just sit them and bring out somebody from the bullpen um you guys don't have that option you don't have somebody coming in um you know from the bullpen for you and so you hit like round 5 and it's like oh we're going to take a 40 minute break and you're like no you know, and then you get like totally mentally out of it, and you could be like five and zero, and then lose the rest of your rounds because you've just totally lost your yeah. stride. But at the same token, and I think your your results show that that there are people that enjoy. Okay, <laughs> I need a break. I need to get away. I need right. to get some real food. I need to sit down. I need to kind of <laughs> recompose myself. Right. No, I mean you're absolutely right, and a lot of people did say that. You know, they appreciated having the extra twenty minutes each round. Um, to kind of decompress and and, right. and walk around. There were a lot of players that were going to time um, more than I think people realized with the five minute. Not the play. The players knew it. I think it was the judges and the uh, the tos thought, oh, five minute your time. These rounds are gonna go super fast. It's gonna be awesome. No, <laughs> you know. Um, so I don't know. I was expecting there to be a more favorable on the extended rounds or the no lunch break than than anything. Um, the next one that I brought up, um, was kind of, I have a little bit of an ulterior motive on this one. Um, back when we used to have best of one regionals, it was one day on Sunday and you guys would come out, you'd still be able to leave Sunday night and get home, drive home, whatever it was. Um, uh, but the, it would end, I don't even know, it would end Sunday at like six or seven o'clock or whatever and everybody would still be able to go home um regionals are starting to get to be a humongous production you're there all weekend you're playing in your mss and your pcs and stuff like that and i was just like well what if we went back to that for part of the circuit or even like maybe a separate part of the circuit or a separate tier of the circuit where you would have best of one and so i said you know would players be interested in playing in a one day regional that was best of one with a lower entry fee and this was pretty much tied across the board except um if there was an x2 cut players seemed to be more favorable on that and that got almost 400 votes so there's 37 percent of the 400 votes were favorable if it was an x2 cut and i know that some of the comments on that uh, were favorable if it was a lower tier event. So like last year's special event that was 130 points seemed to be favorable on there. What do you guys think about that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, it's so I I have two thoughts. If if we continue to have really small numbers, and you have like really low numbers. <clears throat> I mean I could. Um... And and you were able to crank through in a day fine um that that would just mean like for me from a staffing perspective i probably wouldn't show up until saturday instead of friday right there's no need for me to be there saturday uh because if we were to get done at six or seven o'clock at night on sunday i i'm not making it back with a, a reasonable amount of time um um six maybe eight probably not trying to get back to, to, to where I need to go. Um, now, if, if we continue to see larger numbers where we have these really long days, like what time did you get done on Saturday after playing your Swiss? Uh, about 9 o'clock. Yeah, so if you have a large enough tournament, uh, I, can't, I can't see running nine rounds of Swiss till 9 o'clock at night. It, it, there's no way you can fit in the top cut after that. Um, so, so the, you'd you'd have to change up the structure. Um, uh, uh, in some some regards, I'm I'm. We've talked. It's not going to be shocked to you, but I, I'm kind of more along the lines of. I think the TCG and the VGC should have a similar structure with regards to number of players. You hit a certain number of thresh uh, players that that magical 227 mark. If you can get 227 at a regional for VGC, let's give you a day two Swiss. You know, let's play five more rounds of Swiss on Sunday and then cut to eight. You know, instead of saying, hey, you played nine rounds on Saturday with a hundred and some odd people, and then we're going to cut to a top eight. 
the right. next day. And, and then it's kind of a, it's almost anticlimactic with, with that regard. It's like, hey, you played <clears> your <throat> butt off all day, and now we're going to pick eight players. And then Sunday, you know, we got one table worth of VGC players sitting in the corner of a room of a bunch of TCG people playing five or six more rounds of Swiss. It's like, wah, wah, wah. Um, I, I, I personally would love to see the VGC numbers get over the 227 mark and TPCI to give us a day two Swiss. Mm -hmm. I, that that's kind of my opinion. Right. Um, logistically, an all day event on Sunday, I don't know <clears throat> how that would work. I, I I just I have kind of mixed thoughts. I can go either way. No, I I understand that standpoint. It just feels like, and I know a lot of the players have have been commenting on it as well that, you know, the day two or the the two day regional seems to be a little bit excessive, um, especially with you know, I guess the point structure and, and, you know, it just seems to be a lot like, you know, for, for nationals and worlds, absolutely keep us out there, whatever. But I don't know. And maybe, maybe we need to bring in a smaller tier, not an MSS, but like a, like a, like a state's level thing, you know, and either eliminate MSS or PCs or something like that. But you do, say, a state-level situation where, like, the special event tier, like I was saying, where it's, like, not each state gets it, obviously, but, say, each, you know, region gets one periodically throughout the year. And it's just, like, a one-day thing that you do um, to kind of supplement regionals since not everybody can get out to every regional and can, ha you know, can handle doing that full weekend. It's because it's a lot, you know? Um, and this is just my thought. Like, this is just me kind of shooting shit. So you know, I was thinking if, if you were going to go to a, a, a one day, one day regional, um, I, and and I know there there are other issues with this, but like, I'd rather just do it on Saturday. You can drive down Friday, get a hotel, play all day Saturday, and either leave Saturday night, or go sightseeing in the town on Sunday, and then go home. You know those kinds of things. It 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 gets your weekend a little bit more aligned to the rest of the business world or school world, right? Instead of. Um, instead of coming down and then possibly missing uh, a, a Monday based upon travel schedule. Right, um, right. But I know with the TCG numbers growing, Saturday is kind of like the biggest, most cramped area for space because you got like a bajillion TCG folks. And that's kind of where the thought came from because as I was walking around on Sunday, um, I mean, Christine made a really good um, decision on, you know, how to use the space and stuff like that, but there was still a lot of empty space. And she had, like, massive amounts of space in that hotel. Like, every every corner on Saturday was full. There was stuff everywhere. But on Sunday, there was a main stage, and then there was, like, a whole big empty area. Side events was kind of empty. And it kind of, you know, in, if you were at Hartford, it was the same thing. Hartford was a huge room. And then on Sunday, there was nothing in it. And so it's kind of been like, you know, and I talked to, to Dave Schwimmer from Pokemon about this at, at Hartford, and it's like, what do we put in that space? Like, the organizer obviously is paying for a full day of this space. That's why the, you know, the, the fees are so much to, to attend, because they have to rent it for two days, and they have all this empty space that's kind of being wasted on Sunday. What can we do to kind of encourage, you know, A, people to stick around, or put something else in there that could potentially be, you know, a, a, a seat filler. You know, and I was yeah. like, well, what if we, what if we went back to one day regional for video game? You know, because we, we definitely get the smaller numbers. You know, TCG would readily gobble up those numbers. They, you know, there's more than enough TCG players to take up the numbers that we, you would miss for VG on Saturday. Um, <clears throat> you know, what, what, could, what could you do that organize? You know, would encourage organizers to kind of be a little bit more generous to VG and kind of see yeah. it in a different light. Well, there's, but. there's kind of two things in my mind with that though, too, is, you know, I, I know the Pokemon company does this for like NAIC and worlds, maybe not, no, not necessarily worlds, but like for NAIC, I know like, well, did they do that for NAIC? In, in the past with nationals, at least I, I know that their day two configuration for the rooms have changed, right? Yes. So you, you, when you have the reduced numbers, they like, crunch down instead of having two ex exhibition halls they go to one or a half or something um you know so regional organizers i think could also be looking at the same thing with their they contracts can't. with their venue they can't so the, so the thing why, of it is I, I know a little bit about event planning 
And most of these venues, if you want to rent the space, that big space, you got to take both, both days. You got to have it for both days. You can't, most of the places, and I'm not saying all of them, most of the places will not allow you to half that space up because there's no way they're going to get another convention to come in and fill that space. So they're going to lose out on money, right? No, no, no. I'm talking about like the, the places where like you're actually using two halls, you know, combined kind of thing where, where they can partition it off and, and bring well, up the Well, that's what I'm saying. A lot of the times the, the conventions that they could get to come in, A, aren't going to want to be held on Sunday and B, aren't going to want that smaller space. They're going to want the larger space. Uh, and and the, other, the, other, the other aspect that I was going to share, though, too, is, you know, by, by pushing your, it, it, there's pluses and minus, you know, but pushing to your, your video game players to Sunday also is kind of a, I, 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 did any of the players respond with like a, hey, you know, why do we have to be pushed to Sunday? You know, it, do they do Well, they I didn't like mention that the one day regional would be on a Sunday. It was just, that was where I was going with mm. that. Like, what, you okay. know, what, you know. What would you would you do a one day regional if it was you know best of one? That was my thing. I didn't mention really Sunday, but I think everybody kind of got the where I was going with it. Like this is the point that I was trying to make. You know, would would you be willing to do best of one at a regional? And like I said, this is this is all me hypothetically brainstorming, kind of like thinking about you know what what these organizers are, are doing and what what's going on and kind of making the room look, you know, making the space look a little bit better, you know, and also think about it. We've lost attendance, especially in juniors and seniors since we've gone to two day because all the juniors and seniors that used to play both games, um, aren't, they had to they're not, choose one. right. So they're not. So now they're all playing TCG. TCG seeing record attendance in, in, you know, in all divisions pretty much. And it's like, we're getting 11 juniors when we used to get 50 and 60 and 100 seniors, you know? I used to even be a player that played both. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I favored VGC, but if all my TCG friends were driving up to wherever the regional was early for, for TCG, you know, I would join. I'd play rounds, right. you know? And, yeah, and, and, and you, you, one of the things that, and again, it, it, it comes back to, from a from a company perspective, it comes back to money. Wh which of the two aspects of the Pokemon game bring the most money into TPCI and the Pokemon company? And it's not the video game, right? Um, it's those cards and all the peripherals that go with the cards and boxes and promos and dice and elite trainer boxes and the eighty dollar collection sets and. Um, e e all, all that extra stuff. Um, video game players, Pokemon Company gets money when they buy the cartridge or two if they're buying both, you know, versions. And that's it. Um, the, the 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 3DS console console itself that goes to Nintendo. Um, that's about it. So mm. that's another aspect that the, the Pokemon Company when it when it has to make a decision about supporting one over the other, I think we're always going to lose that battle. Right. Right. I mean, and, and that's what I'm saying. Like, there's got to be a way that we can figure out how to, um, I don't want to say prove our worth or prove our value to the organizers, but make it so that we're kind of not an afterthought anymore. You know, like, I really feel like VGC is an afterthought to most not all, I will not say all, because there are a lot of organizers out there that run TCG and that run regionals that care about VG, but a lot of the times it feels like VG is an afterthought, you know? And yeah. and the players feel it. The players absolutely feel it. So it, it's it's something that has been weighing on my mind, like what what are we what can we do? Um, I Mike, by the way, I have a graphic on my screen. I actually have my Twitter on my screen so that people could see the stats. So I don't know if you want to do that. You don't have to. Thanks. But I put it up. Well, Bulldoze asked for it, so I moved it on the screen. So um, <clears throat> just so that people could see in the chat. Uh, the next question that I kind of brought up, and this has to do with travel, is how you know how far have you traveled for a mid season, and what region you know what region do you live in, and so. 310 people voted. 
Uh, 40% of them said they've traveled one to three hours, but they're 19% of those 310 have traveled five plus hours to go to a mid season. Um, <clears throat> so, and that, that's like across regions too. Like Chuppa lives out on Long Island and travels up to the MIT mid season. And that takes him seven hours. Um, I know some people in Europe have mentioned that they've traveled, uh, five plus hours. Uh, Russell down in um, Australia has mentioned that he traveled nine hours to judge one. So obviously he wow. stay, stayed overnight. Um, I think uh, so. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that are willing to travel, and that's mid seasons is fifty points. You know. So, and this is, again, me trying to figure out, is there something that we could do to kind of maybe pull VGC out, have a standalone circuit, and, you know, not fully, obviously not fully, but, like, kind of elevate mid-season to something different, maybe kind of special event tier situation that people would still be willing to travel for that would be one day, you know? You know, I, I would not be opposed to having a, a parallel, I don't know, I, I, but then again, I'm not a player, so, but uh, you, you use the word uh, standalone circuit, right? But, you know, almost like a parallel regional circuit where it's just BGC and, and then the TCG folks have uh, their own regional events, right? Right. Um I think where that causes a little bit of problem, those families that have both TCG and BGC players, you're talking about multiple travel dates, right. you know, those kinds of things. So that, that has its own unique set of wrinkles. Um, but hmm. no, you're Lots absolutely right. That's consider. definitely a consideration. But a lot of the parents are already taking these kids three and four hours to mid seasons as it is, and those are not paired with league cups because you know you have to run a league cup in a store and you can't fit um you know the 40 and 50 players next to however many people are showing up for the league cup so a lot of times those well, actually, are not there's, in ohio there's a lot of places that we are actually running a league cup in a mid-season at the same time well what is the attendance on that though mm. <laughs> good point geo have smaller families <laughs> Yes, yes, Gio. That that is that is an adequate answer for the West Coasters. Um, <laughs> us people in the Midwest love to breed, apparently, and have many Breeders. kids. <laughs> Breeders. That's right. Um, yeah, but yeah, that was just basically me trying to figure. All right, what you know, what's the what's the the situation with people traveling? How far are they willing to travel? What are they doing? And I know that not everybody is the same. Not everybody's willing to go um, very far. You know, I've I've actually driven up to New Hampshire. I think that was like a three and a half, four hour drive to run a PC for Patty. I did it twice. Um, and I did it in one day. So I did it round trip and it was like an awful, awful experience driving Ooh, home by myself yeah. um, at like eight <laughs> o'clock at night or something like that. And me. Yeah, I know you did it, but you fell asleep in the back, Ian. Um, <laughs> that doesn't count. Yeah, it doesn't count. Jen had to to drink a lot of coffee because I wasn't drinking Red Bull at the time, so I was drinking a lot of coffee on that drive. And oh boy, oh boy. Oh, um, and I know. Um, so you know, there's been people that have driven, you know, from Ohio to my mid seasons. Some people from Jersey have driven out to your mid seasons and um, other mid seasons out in Ohio. So there's, you know, there's a lot of crossover. People are willing to travel, but. A lot of times they end up staying with their friends for the weekend and then driving home, so it's not like they're doing yeah. a trip in one day. Um, uh, so the next one was basically how late is too late for a tournament to end on a Sunday, and this goes back to the one day, you know, best of one kind of situation here. How late is too late for, and, and really it was any tournament, but <clears throat> mostly I was interested to see what people thought was too late, and the bulk of the, almost 50% of the people said, 8, 8 p.m. or more is too late for a tournament to end on a Sunday. So that's 164 votes we got on that one. I don't know why the yeah, online with, says 163, but on my phone it says 164. I think with that, if you're if you're prepared to do it, I think as long as you can get a flight home, you, know, you can get that late flight, you can get the red line, the red eye, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, late flights. Um, but... 
Yeah, I can see. But it also, again, goes back to the how far would you travel for for an event? I mean, mm-hmm. I I don't often go to regionals that are on different coasts, except for, you know, that one time. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Adam's still very grateful for that. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. <clears throat> but um, I don't know. And I'm sure the players that were more that are more serious than I was to get points when I played, you know, they travel to a lot more regionals. But yeah, I mean, and I think, you know, on the TCG side, there's a lot of understanding that, you know, with day two Swiss and top cut, they're basically playing a second tournament on Sunday. They're already ready to stay Sunday night. You know, most of them, if they're expecting to cut. They're expecting to stay Sunday night. They're booking that flight, you know, 9, 10 o'clock at night. Or they're getting the 7 a.m. flight out. And um, I will say Dallas, there was a lot of players still hanging around on Sunday. You know, mm-hmm. um, I had the privilege to hang out with some of them Sunday night. Uh, some crazy game, Quip, Quiplash, I think it was called. Quip something or other. I don't even know. It was crazy. Um, and that was, like, so much fun. But there was, like... 10, 15 of us in one room and there were still people down in the lobby and there were people like in other rooms. So there was still people like kind of million and that was just VG players. I'm not saying everyone is going to be happy to stay late and, and leave on Monday morning because, you know, people are poor, they have jobs and they have lives and they're college students and there's all kinds of factors. But I don't know, that's just something that I was also thinking about um, in terms of that kind of stuff. Um... Hey guys, I am sorry. I'm gonna have to duck out here, but I will leave a very handy substitute in my place. <laughs> uh oh, what is he doing? I'm trying to figure out how to make this work <laughs> stealthily. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next one was basically how how do you get to an event, which I'll skip because that was just mostly driving, carpooling, that kind of stuff. Um, and then the one that had the most votes, Mike, was the, um, I play VGC and I am currently A, and the options were a college student, high school student, work full-time or work part-time. Um, we had a lot of... College students, right? College students. So over a thousand people voted on this. And I think the reason we had so many votes on it is because, um, Aaron, Aaron Zhang was nice enough to retweet it. Um, Yeah. 45% of the people that responded, so 45% of the 1,000 VGC players that responded are college students. Um, Some of them a mix of college and working full or part-time, but they all, you know, 45% of our player base is college students. So this is like people that are not really that well to do, you know, maybe spending, you know, the little bit of money that they have to go to these tournaments. And so that's kind of the factors that we have to think about. And it's definitely a different crowd, I think, than we're seeing in TCG. Um, what do you think? <sighs> I think that is a, a good call that the, the majority of them are in that demographic. But we also have to keep in mind that the demographic might be a little bit skewed because who's going to answer a Twitter poll? This is not going to be a a grade schooler right well no i mean you're, um, you're right you're, not, not to you're say right. that we not to say that we have a huge junior senior following anyway so well that's why i didn't put um, grade schooler on there i put high school college work full-time or part-time yeah yeah but i get that um yeah um and you're right yeah, the results that, are skewed because it's twitter so that's mostly college kids um, yeah you young snappers but um <laughs> But, but you're right. I mean, if you look at the demographics of the master's divisions, the, the overwhelming majority of the players that you see out there are college, fresh out of college, fresh into college, yeah. um, that kind of age range. So um, I, I, I could definitely see that. Um, yeah. What other questions did you um, have there? Let me go up. I want to shrink this chat thing here. Um, and then it was basically, how do you pay for trips to regionals? 140 people responded to that. 71% of them said they pay for themselves. So, and this is like, you know, remember these are college kids answering. So they, with their meager incomes, whether they're working part-time or, you know, whatever it is that they're doing for money, they're paying for themselves. Uh, only 9% of them said that their parents are paying for them. So that, that I thought was interesting. 
Um, and then there is the the question of why are you waiting so long to book? So I kind of got into how far in advance are you planning to, you know, do you plan or book your travel? Um, only 109 people responded to that. And it basically was 46% are booking like a month or two out. Um, and then I asked a question, uh, how far in advance is it when flights are cheap, when TPCI posts the schedule, or when the TO releases the details of the event? And it basically kind of confirmed that b- people are booking when the flights are cheap, which I expected. Um, yeah. And then I got to my question, why do you wait until the last minute to register for regionals? 191 people responded, and 62% of them said in case they can't go. And I think that kind of comes back down to money as well. They wait until the last minute because they're not they're not sure if they're going to be able to go. Whether it's, I don't know if I'm going to do well on this test. I don't know if I'm going to have a project to do. I don't know if my final exams are going to interfere. You know, there's a lot of factors there. So I, I, I'm wondering if we would get more people registering earlier if there was a better policy from uh, organizers regarding refunds. Um, um, I mean, maybe. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe not a full refund, but let's say it's a forty-dollar entry, and you get thirty dollars back if you cancel within, you know, the week of. Yeah. No, I I, I agree. Um, and I think a lot of organizers do have a good policy or a decent policy on refunds. Um, and I, you, you and I have both used um, the Arcanine Lab system of registration. Getting through that system for 1,300 players, like going through all that is kind of a pain. So I get like the situation. Plus, like you've paid for that service. You have to pay a fee. You're really paying twice because Arcanine Labs, you're paying for the service to use that. And then they use a, a website to take the payment. Um, what is the website again? Stripe? Stripe, yeah. And then Stripe charges you. So you're getting hit twice for using the online registration. And so you're losing out, you know, you're losing part of that, that registration fee. And so offering like a full refund just kind of isn't really. Well, and that's why I said not a full refund, but like a partial refund, something that right. covers, you know, uh, you're, you're, you're out of pocket for the, for, for using Arcanine, for using Stripe and a little extra for your time because you've now reduced your number and that you had planned for right um but you know so it, 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 and this is just me but I'm, I'm not the college kid eating ramen and 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 pop tarts <laughs> um, that was me this weekend but if you're doing a 40 dollar registration a 30 dollar you know cancellation you know so you get 30 dollars back if you cancel and you, you're out 10 bucks which is not bad right um and if you're going to be flying anyways and you've already bought your plane tickets and you cancel, you're going to get airline credit. But usually there is a fee associated with that as well. So, I mean, th- th- there, there are costs to canceling. Um, and, and I think, you know, I, I haven't re- even really looked at the cancellation policies of most of these organizers. But um, I, I would think if you offer zero cancellation policy, um, you're kind of doing your own self a disservice because you're discouraging people until the last minute, you know, um, in, especially in that demographic where they're not sure if they're going to have the money or if they're going to have the ability to get time off or school or, or those kinds of things. Right. No, you're absolutely right. I think that, you know, it's something that they could, they could be looking at as a possible, um, you know, way to in, in, improve, a, you know, registration early on. And I think that can only help them, you know, plan for the event because really, you know, you have such varying attendance, you know, um, I think Arcanine Labs actually posted it on their private group, um, but they basically, it was, and it wasn't about that, it was about something else, um, they were trying to kind of talk to the day two for TCG, and they were looking at the attendance there, um, and since TCG has gone to day two, um, it seems like, you know, attendance has gone pretty much through the roof, but, it, it not as much as you may may think. You know, it's kind of arced up, but kind of not as much. So that, you know, there's definitely factors that are that are affecting um, attendance. And so when you're, you know, so I'm looking at the chart here. So uh, Indiana, 
had 823 masters or 800 yeah they had 823 masters on TCG but then you get down to Orlando and they only had 651 you know that's that's a, a big difference in attendance and you know looking at what everybody else is doing in attendance wise kind of not really going to help if you're not getting people registering early um and then like I'm looking at uh t Dallas for example Dallas last year at TCG had 518 players registered or whatever attendance and this year had a thousand sixty you know but luckily their tcg players are registering early and often so they're not worried about like coming up with that space but that again kind of speaks to why we're losing space and seats because they're getting astronomically larger and their players are registering early but that's that's by the by um i also asked about side events at regionals because again you know organizers are trying to fill that that day two that sunday with with side events and they're trying to come up with more stuff for VGC players to play in. They want to know what you guys want. And basically what the, the, the consensus is, is that most of the, the community over 50% of you guys only will play in side events if it's a PC or an MSS, which I get, I, you know, I understand that, that part of it. So what do you think, Mike? No, I, that sounds reasonable. Am I losing you? Is that it? Should we stop with the data? It's just too much. No, there's not much to say about that one. That one's... Yep. Yeah. In the same vein, though, there is a lot of thought in the community about um, why have a PC or an MSS on the day two. You're taking away from Top Cut. You're not allowing players to watch their friends and things like that. And um, I know that that's more of a concern at, say, Nationals or Worlds, where you have, like, you know, the Anaheim Open or things like that. You have the Open, stuff like that. Um, and I think it's really, you know, it's kind of the player's decision. If they want to watch their friends, they're going to watch their friends. If they want to play in an event, they're going to play in an event. Nobody's, like Geo saying in the channel, nobody's forcing them to play in the MSS. But on the same end of it, if you've put in so much money to this weekend and you've come out with no CP you kind of want to be able to recoup that possibly. And so you're going to be more motivated to play in the CP giving event. And so maybe right. you feel a little bit more pressure there. And now you're, maybe you would have watched your friends, but now you're not going to because, you know. But still, you again, see. that's choices though, right? Are you, are you, do you want to, are you more concerned about recouping or are you more concerned about watching your friend? Um, right. I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, at least by running a mid-season or a PC, that you're giving them the option. Right. You know, and, like, no organizer wants to kind of draw the ire of the community at this point by taking those things away. You know, every organizer wants to make sure that they're at least running a PC at, at the regional right. um, for the players. So. But that is all the data that I had, I believe. Yeah. Mm. Cool. I think I just it'll retweeted the uh, yeah the extended rounds I retweeted. It'll it'll be interesting is uh, maybe you could put together and I could give you some feedback too. But you know, the thoughts uh, into this kind of supplementary circuit standalone circuit kind of concept. It'd be interesting to see some of that fleshed out a little bit. Oh, it's definitely the plan. Um, I'm definitely planning on writing up a proposal of of that um maybe, maybe not proposal but kind of like here's my thoughts on it do with it what you will like this is what the community has said this is what my experience has has drawn me to this conclusion um you know that kind of stuff so it'll definitely get to tpci and that was the kind of the goal of getting everybody's opinion um, and I, I did mention on Twitter that uh, later this week I'm going to put up a Reddit so that people can kind of give me more of their thoughts. Um, I just kind of haven't figured out where I want to go with that one yet because I definitely know people want the longer form responses. But I, I'm not sure where I want to go with that yet. So. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Whew. Lots of All stuff. Right, let me go back to the... What we were agenda. The agenda, kind of. So we we just have to wrap up with the uh, two upcoming events, and they're not in actual chronological order on the on the agenda. But there's Australia coming up, 
really quickly. <laughs> so, if, so if you're going to that, congratulations and have fun on a really long airplane ride. <laughs> I'm lucky and enough to get to sit with Geo for 15 hours. <laughs> Fingers crossed that you get a patch before Australia. Oh, God, please. Um, if I get to Australia and there's no patch, I'm going to go hang out with the kangaroos. That's it. Like, I just throw it in the towel at that point. Ugh. Gio and I were talking about, like, doing some recording on the plane. <laughs> oh, we'll see what I, happens know, hey, with Gio, that. <laughs> Gio, if you guys take, like, Gio and Jen go out, Gio and Jen's big adventure... <laughs> And you take a bunch of video footage and you put that all together. <laughs> I want to hear that whole uh, the Keystone Cop, did, 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 you know, just you know, the old-fashioned Keystone Cop, you know, uh, <laughs> what's that what's that video effect where everybody's moving faster than they normally oh should? Oh my God! And, and slapstick comedy. Yeah, that, that, I would use that in between rounds oh, in a heartbeat. Poor Alberto. Alberto's got to sit with us. We're just gonna harass him the entire time. <laughs> I, I want to get a picture of Jen wearing like those like uh, high heel platform pimp shoes doing what? doing the doing the Pee Wee Herman. No, ew. Yeah. You're not getting me. To, what is the name of that? Um, oh crap! I watched that movie too like a thousand times. Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Yeah, yeah, where he's doing da, 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 da. tequila. There we go. I knew Gio would know it. <laughs> Duh. Everybody knows that, Jen. I couldn't remember it. I'm sorry. Leave me alone. I'm getting old. So, yes. <laughs> so, yes. I, Geo and Jen's big adventure. I, I cannot wait to see that oh uh, post-Australia. Um, and um, be careful of all the things that want to kill you there. Um, that big bat snake thing. Yeah, that's right. Drop bears. You know, those kinds of things. But whatever. <laughs> scorpions and spiders spiders and black widows and even like the butterflies want to kill you in australia I think, <laughs> so, uh, so keep keep that in mind be safe good luck to everybody there uh and then immediately the weekend after that i believe right is collinsville yeah um, that's the collinsville uh, formerly known st louis uh regional down down in that area neck of the woods yeah um that's shaping up to be a big event too. Crackler's put on a big show. Um, they, 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 they did something right to somebody in TPCI because uh, they, they also swung the Professor Cup seminar thing as well. So that, that has a big draw for a lot of the uh, um, staffing and professors too. If, if they weren't thinking about going to regional, they, I think they got a little bump from that regard too. So um, that's coming up as well. Um, and then of course we got the host of other regionals that are, that are on the coasts that, uh, that are coming up shortly. So yeah, Collinsville looks to be really good. Um, I'm excited for their, you know, professor seminar and cup thing. I think that's on a Friday, which yeah, count, count, totally counted me out. I just started a new job and I'm lucky enough that my job was nice to me. Australia. To <laughs> let me, um, let me go to Australia. Um, so, yeah, I wasn't going to push it asking to do three events in a row because I did Dallas this weekend and then, you know, Australia in two weeks. And then, yeah, Collinsville just wasn't in the cards. So. I see. Priorities. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, yeah. So if you haven't registered for some of those events and they're in your neck of the woods, by golly, Miss Molly, register. I feel Register bad for early. anyone going to Australia and Collinsville. That's going to be really rough. Back to back, yeah. Oh, God. Flying home, that 20-something hour, 29-hour flight back from Australia, and then that Friday flying out, or Thursday even, if you're doing the um, Professor Cup thing, flying out Thursday. Oh, my God. That's awful. I would just take, like, three weeks off at that point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, basically. All but right. yeah, Vince always puts out a really good show. That main event should be good. It's in the same convention center as last year, right? Yeah. So that's 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 always good. That the that that was a nice place. It was in the middle of nowhere, but at least there was like restaurants around it. Um, and again, Just don't we go to definitely steak and shake it like ten o'clock at night. <laughs> they don't have any milkshakes at ten o'clock at night. What was that? That was awful. 
Yeah, that was terrible. That was like the worst thing. I, yeah, I definitely don't recommend. But then we didn't recommend, what was it, the Fridays that we went to the next night or whatever it was? The Applebee's or Fridays? Applebee's. I don't remember. We went to something the next night. It was all, also it was not that great. I don't remember. Anyway. Um, but yeah, Collinsville should be a great event. Like I said, Vince puts on a good event. I know he was super excited about it this weekend. He was talking about it with everyone. Uh, definitely register for that. Uh, I'll be player, there. was it player.arcanimelabs.com to get the registration. <laughs> Are you doing the Mariah Carey thing? I'll be there. No? No, no. <laughs> You'll be back? Mike, <laughs> don't sing. <laughs> I'm going to make you sing. I'm going to take you out for karaoke at, at NAIC again. Ooh. Hell Actually, yeah. yeah, Mike does sing. Mike does sing. Alcohol. See? <laughs> <laughs> All right, but that that should be it for tonight. All right. We're well, good. thank you very much, everybody, for joining us, and uh, we look forward to talking to you all again soon. Thank you for listening to us ramble. Uh, not sure what we're going to talk about next, but next we'll figure it out, Next week we maybe. have no show because next week I'll be on a plane with you. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, you could Are talk. Are you, you on Tuesday? Yeah, I'm leaving Monday night, Monday afternoon. I'll be flying overnight, and I'm getting to Australia on Wednesday morning at 8.30. So that's like Tuesday night so at 6. What do you mean, why am I getting there so early? The event is on Thursday. Is it? Oh, not next. Oh, wait, never mind. No, wait, yes, I'm leaving this, this coming week. Yes. But why does it start Thursday? Because it's an NAIC, or it's an IC. Registration's on Friday, Thursday. No, yeah, the registration's on Friday, though. I mean, registration's on Thursday. You remember, yeah. we have to be there Thursday for all the meetings and nonsense, and then the check-in so is Thursday night. Because it's the only flight that gets me in on time. If I took any other flight, I wasn't getting in until, like, Thursday afternoon or something like that. It was ridiculous. Oh, dear God. Yeah, I know. I was really not happy about it. I ended up having to take an extra day off of work, and I was just, like, not thrilled. I mean, I could have taken, like, a 10 o'clock flight on, on Monday night. But then I wouldn't get there until Wednesday night, possibly Thursday morning, and I need to be in meetings Thursday morning at like 8 a.m. It, 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 it seems like it'd be easier to get to the moon than Australia at this point. Send me to the moon, please. TPCI, I want to run a tournament on the moon. Like, let's make it happen. Give a call over to SpaceX. You know your guy Elon wants to send some people to the moon. Let's the do it. I'm is, talking to you. The problem is you need at least eight players to be sanctioned. So, so let's get, eight, get eight players. Let, so then let's take the top eight CP finishers from last year in the world and put them all on a plane or a shuttle or whatever, a rocket, and send us up to the moon. Do it. Do it. You won't. <laughs> I'll send you to the sun. Hold a, hold a tournament on the sun. <laughs> you see, you can. All right. Enough rambling anyway. for tonight. Everybody's <laughs> suffered en enough. Thank you, everybody, and uh, we'll catch you next week. No, you won't. Next Bye. week, I'll be in Australia. Oh, Good. that's right. We'll catch you whenever we decide to get back again. <laughs> Stay tuned. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Good guys. night. <laughs>